Welcome everyone. I think we're going to start. It's about five minutes past the time. So I would like to welcome you. So you are in the workshop called Collective Storytelling, Creative Reflection and Musical Creativity. There is not going to be much talking during the first 20 minutes. So this is the opportunity for me to welcome you and remind you of the rule. Um, first, I'm asking you to ground yourself, be here and now. And I would like for us to take a deep breath just to make sure that we are grounded in the here and now. So let's do it all together. So feel your way back into your body. And I'm asking everybody to turn on the camera for full participation or please exit the room. So our journey together is first we're going to listen to a creation story. Then we will use that creation story to create group stories. And by, by that I mean you will be into breakout rooms and you will work as a group to create another story based on the creation stories that you've heard. And you are going to have about 20 minutes to do that. And it's going to go pretty quickly. And there will be prompts that will be directed toward, uh, to your group for that. Then the next step is that we will reconvene, debrief, and discuss. And then in the end, we'll have words of wisdom. I see a couple of people who have not turned on their camera. And I'm going to have it very strict. So. Please, Carmen and Michelle, turn on your camera, or I'm going to ask you to exit the room. Thank you. I also have Aiden. Perfect. Great. So we'll begin. Her creation story. I was born on my ancestor's land in Bassa, an eastern water reservoir between the Mbende River and the Hindi River. My mother said, I came out before she could make it in, into the room. My mother said, I came out before she could lay down on the bed. My mother also said, I stayed three, mo three moons longer inside her womb. Like the elephant, I had a long development period. My birth was before the new moon, at dawn, during a warm, windy morning. Around five years ago, I remember going up the stairs. It was around 7.20 PM. Suddenly, my knee gave up into the ground. My back leaned against the wall and I sank into an illuminated darkness. The spiritual portal opened beneath my feet and I stepped into my consecration story. My throne name is Peace Elephant and I am a warrior princess. I live in the land where all the stories come to be told and I belong to the woman's elder of Bach. I practice our ancient and sacred art balance of the body. In our spiritual sanctuary, my quest is to harmonize social relationship. So the next step in this process is, oops, 
create your group stories. So I'm gonna ask David to break you into breakout rooms and there should be no more than five people into your groups. The purpose of getting into the breakout rooms again is to create your group stories based on the creation stories that you just heard. The first step when you go into your breakout room is to think of your vision as a group for her story and how do you contribute to bring that story to life. And you will have about three minutes to go through each of the, uh, the prompts that you will have. So the first prompt is to draw your story, your group story, then is to create an act or theater act about that story. The next one is then to sing the story. Once you go through those three steps, then you will be asked to wrap up your group story. And then you will be asked to create a minute presentation of your story. So David, are you ready? They will be getting into the groups. And the one thing that I wanna, I wanna encourage you to do is to use your imagination. There will be no right or wrong. This is your interpretation of what you think the next story could be from what you just heard. Welcome back, everybody. So, how did it go? I see nods, I see smiles. I'm not hearing anything, and I'm wondering if you are hearing me. Are you hearing me? Yes, we are. Yes. Okay, thank you. I thought something happened and I froze in time. All right. So um, I asked a question and I received no answer. So let's just go and move into each group presenting their stories. So what? who is the first group, David? Our first group is Emily, Henry, and Virginia. Okay. And I'm gonna take, uh, just remove the PowerPoint presentation so we can um, each be present and uh, see each other. There you go. 
So right now we are the part of the present of the of this gathering where we um, discuss and debrief. So first group, go. So you want us to discuss or you want us to share? No, present your one minute uh, story first. Got it. Okay. Group one, I will, I'll start. I was born by the river in Mississippi. My father, my father, got parents were there. In the big city, I ran by the river. High, right away. And my parents said, I smiled right away when I Memory was snow in the day the blanket on was my first time in snow. It is actual beauty to capture the I never saw. Being around people and laughter has been part of my life. I see the world and it's beautiful and good and beautiful. Excellent. I love it. I couldn't quite hear what you were saying, but I just love the expression of all your bodies. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Next group. Well. Group two is Elizabeth, Lynn, and Michelle. So there are so many stories that happen in this world, but our group ended up with our creations by each of us individually. State what we have done today. So today I just simply participated three organizations, uh, conferences, uh, which prepare for the International Education Weeks. So I can just hand it to another person. Michelle and Professor Warden. Um, so for me, my story um, was that today I had a class and then I um, babysitted my brother. I feed him and I also had uh, make time to complete a homework and then I'm here. I love it. I love it. Her story, you stuck to it. Love it. Thank you. And the final group, did we have three groups? Sorry, we have four groups. So group, oh, four groups, okay. Group three, Aiden, Carmen, Tracy. Uh, yeah, and Aiden, Carmen, and Tracy. So our story is co-constructed and it begins on a dark night middle of the night, a husband and wife driving, a husband in a new car showing off all the gadgets, the wife focusing, focusing, the husband playing in the car, speeding, the husband racing through red lights, hoping to be able to use the excuse that his wife is having a baby if he gets pulled over. And the thrill and the focus bring them all the way to a hospital in a town called Neptune at a at a hospital that no longer exists. So through the night and around a racetrack and through red lights, the baby arrives. The baby is born and is brought home to a warm and loving household. He is loved by his family. Um, he grows older and meets friends and explores the world around him. And soon he becomes an adult of his own and repeats the cycle with his own children. That's our story. Excellent. I love how you recreated, like you made your own interpretation of the story. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And the final group. 
That's Beck, Suzanne, and Tia. So our group started with a drawing as we talked about kind of things we had together and in common and talked about what our story could look like. Excellent. Uh, yep. Um, so we kind of related to the fact that we all were women and we, we kind of compare that to plants and roots. Um, we came up with a little little snippet of something. So it's women, us women are like plants. Our roots are planted deep into the soil of the soul of the soil. Our roots move through barriers and boulders. We stay firm amongst forces like the wind. Through it all, we prevail. Beautiful. And even though our stories look different, we're all connecting and rooted into the ground and connecting through branches. I love it. Four groups, four different stories, four different interpretations. And for me, that's the beauty of how I do my work. Just because everybody comes in and have, like they bring in their own cultural baggage and that influences the way stories are told. And I wanna bring this back to when I had my conversation with Emily and we were kind of imagining what this will be. Emily asked me three questions and she asked me uh, to tell, to share about who I am, the work that I do and why I do this work. And for me, who I am, the story that I shared with you is actually a fiction of my own story. And it's a continuation. So what I'm doing right now is that I am actually creating a graphic novel of my own story. And this is a continuation of my research. And what I do is that I use art as a way to help people reconnect to themselves. And I don't, and I say it, words for me are overrated. If we can just live in an imaginary land, that's where I will live. And that's what, and that's why I do the work that I do. And one thing I want to point out uh, in the story where I say I live in the land where all the stories come to be told, that's actually the translation of the name of my village where I come from in Cameroon. And for me being, even having that name as the land of my ancestors, for me is, it, it tells about who I am and also the way I want to do my work. And I don't care, I don't care about writing. I don't care about words, but I care about how what we do actually make us feel. So, and I, I know that at the beginning I was, I said something that might have kind of make people feel very uncomfortable, but it was this idea of seeing each other. And I, the question that I have for you and where I want us to start the conversation is, would you have done it if, what would have been your process if you couldn't see it, everybody? How would you have felt in that, in that way? Because I tell people we can make up excuses, but we always have the bandwidth to watch Netflix or do everything that we want to do. But when it comes to actually participating and doing things together as a community, we always find excuses to, to have half of ourselves present. And in order to do this collectively, we all need to be fully present. So I'm going to open the floor and have us start the debrief about what the process was like. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I feel, I feel that I've been rescued by you <laughs> because, uh, you know, I, um, this, the Zoom era now, you know, people that want to stay away, they are away and no, even though professors say you have to turn on your, 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 uh, your camera, some do, but they're not present. They keep looking away. They're, you know, they're not. So be intentional. Uh, I actually, um, I'm, this is my first semester and my professor, uh, uh, when I said about, you should, we should do a breathing exercise in the beginning. 
So to ground everybody here, to make sure everybody's present. And he said, oh, Virginia, that's a good idea. So every time we start a class, we have this breathing exercise. Yeah. And when you start with your breathing exercise, you know, just be ground. It was like, yes, I'm not I alone. <laughs> So thank you for that. I thought it's incredible how, you know, what, we started at like not even one hour. I already feel connected. I already feel that, you know, I trust the people that I was with and I already feel happier. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughts. You can go, I can call on you, your choice. I'll start. <laughs> For us, it was really hard um, not to have any scaffolding. Mm. Because I, I'm not joking. I think for a full five minutes, we just, like, what do we do? What do we do? And then we really started to run out of time. And Lynn and Michelle had the good idea of like, okay, well, everyone can have their story of their day. Like what brought us here today? And you saw mine being stressed out because while I was trying to be in that space of figuring out our story. I see my nine-year-old out this front window here without a coat on walking to the market and it's 40 degrees out. So like, all I'm thinking about is like, how did she get out the door? I'm texting my husband. I'm like, did you let her out without a coat? And so again, it's how much we rely on some sort of external scaffolding to be present, right? If you'd yeah. given us a set of questions, we'd have been able to do it. But once we didn't have that set of questions, it was hard. So yeah. I appreciated that challenge. Thank That's you. beautiful. Let me ask you for your group, how did it feel within the body? And especially when you had that five minutes of struggle. And people of your group can actually jump in. Lynn or Michelle, how did it feel? Yeah, just like I uh, want to echo with what Professor Warren had previously mentioned, like it's a little bit hard, if, especially when we are without, without some certain scaffold. And just like, I was just somehow wondering like whether it is because we're so engaging to some very scientific uh, thinking patterns that make we, us thinking like we need to actually some have some, still have some stru structures or very systematic ways to thinking about the stories. But these, act, but these activities actually just, I think implicitly uh, tell us just get a little bit away be, just from what we have previously thinking or we can change a little bit about our thinking patterns a little mm -hmm. bit to be very open, don't struggle a lot. And yeah, that's just my feeling. <laughs> So for me, I felt completely lost because I didn't know if I was the only one in that position of what I, I what I was supposed to do or what, like what, what um like I didn't had no questions to follow and I wanted to go back to the to reading the story again, but then I was like, no, I think it's not necessary. But I was like. It, like my mind was like just going over what like I wanted to go back to the to to the story, but also uh, when we presented all our stories, I was like, oh, that wasn't that difficult at all. It was it wasn't to um we didn't needed to think that hard actually. So, but that was a completed challenge. <laughs> Beautiful, thank you. Who goes next? What has been your experience? What, are, what was your struggle? Yes, Beth, go ahead. I know similarly in our group, there was much confusion, especially at the beginning where we kind of sat there and said, okay, what's going on? Let's take a pause. Let's get to know each other a little bit. Um, I know I came in and was kind of relaxed from the breathing exercise and then we got this and the tension came in and the confusion. Um, so it was nice to be able to kind of find that connection there. Well, we're all confused <laughs> and kind of figuring out from there, but I'm sure my group might, might have other things to say. So who were people in your group? What were your, what were your feelings? Um, yeah, I think to kind of go off of what Beck just said, it, 
it was confusion. And I guess because we are in a space where we try to have stuff very clear and concise and all that all the time, um, just because we want to be right, right? You want to make sure you're doing it correctly all the time. But that also doesn't leave room for creativity. And I think that's kind of what your goal um, with this, with this um, activity was. But um, our whole focus really was trying to find something that we all share. Um, mm -hmm. That's what we came up with, the fact that we're all females. Um, and we kind of just kind of built off that. And that actually created, you know, created, created more of a creative mindset within us. Um, that kind of helped. Yeah, and to go off of Tia's point, we were all kind of stressing out because we were all saying we're not creative people. We all kept saying that, but I don't think you necessarily have to be creative in order to tell a story or in order to create a story. And so like seeing everyone's different stories and how different groups told it, I think it just shows like, you don't have to be super artistic or creative. You can just share your story or share a piece of you um, to be a storyteller. That's it, share a piece of you, I love it. We have one group who has not spoken yet. What was it like for you, Tracy? Uh, it felt I trusted your, I trusted, even though I don't know if you said this explicitly, that this was low risk. So I didn't, we didn't know what to do, but we didn't mind, I would say. I'll mm -hmm. let Ava speak for himself, but I felt just like it didn't matter. We would just do whatever we would do and that I didn't feel like there'd be any consequence to that. I trusted your, your assurance that there were no wrong answers. So we, we were comfortable. I felt comfortable. Beautiful. Aiden, you want to add? Official discourse. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Um, we were like, we got in there, we were a little bit nervous, didn't know exactly what to say. Um, but then we were kind of like, you know, there's, it's, it, there's not a lot of directions for a reason. We're, we, there's nothing that we could say that'd be wrong. So let's just go and, you know, we'll figure something out and we'll go with it. Mm. Who else was in your group? It was just us. It was just the two of you? Yeah. Okay. Veronica Herman was there, but she was just there for IT support. So she did not participate in our co-create co-construction. Got it. If I can jump in really quickly, I didn't participate in any of the storytelling, but I can speak to um, sort of navigating all of your anxieties, right? I I don't know if you all know, but Zoom sends you notifications when someone needs you. And and for me, and to be honest, I still feel that anxiety. I'm trying to bring myself down from it. But for me, it's juggling, respecting this process and, and, and understanding that there is a method to Veronica's madness and making sure that you all feel comfortable enough to participate. And so it was, it was nice to see in real time, mm. sort of just the confusion and the shock of how, how dare you ask us to do something without giving us the instructions in the Zoom chat. And then slowly, slowly people saying, okay, well, we've got 15 minutes left, so we have to present something. So I just wanted to speak to that and honor both sides of it, the, the confusion, but the respect for the creativity. I'm glad you, you mentioned it. I was actually gonna keep you for last, but I'm like, let's just, let's, let's just let it play out and, and, uh, and see, because I, I felt it from you as you were, you were, like, you were navigating all of us, including me. Because I was trying to send a message and I couldn't send you the message and you were kind of figuring out, okay, how do I make it uh, work? So uh, I love it. And I think we have one more group that has not spoken about their experience. What was it like? I think our group spoke, uh, Virginia spoke, I think we, um, uh, Henry and I haven't spoken, but I would reiterate, it was amazing to me and kind of having my teacher hat on when we got to the group. I was like, I could remember singing out of the directions and Virginia was like impeccably, she could say, okay, this story was the time of the birth, the first memory. I mean, she had analytically gone the story and then it was thinking to me, okay, when, when we, as you know, as when I'm asking students to do things, we all come into what we've heard so differently. Um, and so Virginia was really able to step up and sort of guide us and get us started and kind of we all thought, okay, what do we do for actions? And then Henry and I, you know, just jumped into sort of being from the music side. Okay, let's, we feel, we feel good there. And I'll let Henry speak for himself, but it was like, that part was 
kind of a natural piece of it. But I think it was amazing to me that Virginia had heard everything she knew kind of, and she guided us through that. But then, you know, also we all, if we didn't all hear it and, and capture it, we would have been at very different places when we showed up. And so that kind of mentorship, but also, you know, the, how we communicate and, you know, how we show up may be different um, mm. depending on what we heard, what we can remember, what we, what, what, how we process things, you know, what our bandwidth is today, um, you know, whether our internet's cutting in and out and we can actually have the opportunity to follow everything. So I was thinking about all those things. Mm. Beautiful. Go ahead, Henry. Uh, yeah, so, so like when we came into this whole thing, um, I think there was definitely a lot of confusion in our group about like, well, what do we do for this? Um, but the one nice thing about it was that like, I, I find this is, is somewhat of a rarity just in terms of group projects sometimes is that not a single person was like, okay, I'm taking charge. I'm doing this the way that I want to do it. We were all very open to the creative process and, and opening up to other people. And it just kind of happened to work out that we had someone who was fantastic with uh, singing and, and talking and movement and to people who happen to do music. And it just like, it fit together, but also everyone was willing to both pitch in and also like accept that they weren't the, the centerpiece of, of mm. everything, which I think was really nice. Beautiful. So this is how I do my work. I pretty, pretty much throw you in and you figure it out. And this is kind of the result of my upbringing also. And uh, so I grew up literally as you are told the day before that you're leaving and then you're going into another country. So all you have to do, you have minimal time to pack up everything and then go into the place. So for me, that's how I, and that spontaneity, that creativity, that let go of everything is for me the beauty of creation and creativity. And, for, and, and the reason I say that is even when I talk with my parents or when I ask my father, like, what was it like growing up? And I always base all my work on that. So his thing was that telling stories were part of their upbringing. So you go, so when you, when you get out of school, you go and meet with your friends and you create stories from the stories that you've heard that have been told by your aunts and mothers and grandmothers and everything. So the reason I, 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 it was important for me to actually read the story to you was just to give you that and then let you go into whatever it was, whatever you could remember, whatever it was, you were your body was going to retain something that was going to be meaningful, and that was going to be the jumping off point of your create of your creativity. And for me, being in that mold where instead of having okay, step one you do this, step two you do this, step three you do this, which you kind of had, but it wasn't present. I was just like, go loose and figure it out, as if you are, you know, into a new environment and trying to figure out how everything works. And I love that you were actually able to, um, to create something and get to know one another, which we could have done at the beginning. But for me, it's kind of a waste of time because if we, if we are in a group, we, get to do, we are doing that and we get to do it even at a deeper level than if we would have said, my name is this, I am a third year this, I do this. It's just boring information that for me are meaningless in the process of creativity. It's like, yeah, keep your academia over there. Let's just create stories and work and figure out how we can be all together in the same room. So for me, it's always about bringing back the memories of my ancestors because storytelling is part of who we are and what we do. Having the name of the, you know, be, the, the, the name of our land is what we do. So it's always about how do we create, how do I create in my work, in everything that I do, an environment where people can come together and by the time they leave, they've actually had a, created a deeper meaning than if we would have just been, I don't know, doing everything that you get to do in your classrooms with your professors, leading whatever. Um, and for me, it's also about kind of breaking down the power dynamic that's always present within academia and allowing everybody to be at that same level where, yeah, I don't think I have the leg up here. Uh, so how do I reach out to the other person in order to create that environment that's going to help us all evolve together at the same rate? So that was my goal in this process. And I'm glad to see that it actually worked. 
and people, you know, you, you, you had a very, a very interesting spectrum. And uh, it was just beautiful to watch and to see and to be part of. Um, so I'm going to stop there and ask if there are any questions at all before we move together and how, do, where do you want to take this conversation? What classes do you teach? I want to be part of them. That I, I just keep thinking about that. I just don't know. It's the opportunity to ask the question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I actually, I took, it's kind of happened very interestingly. I took 2020 off. I say, I'm just going to do me and concentrate on me and figure out what I want to do with my life. Um, and so I don't know yet what I'm going to do, but I know that 2021, they're going to be, I'm, I'm starting to actually figure out what I want to do. And what I want to do is actually uh, have, um, you know, gathering where we just create, but I don't know yet. Once I know, I will definitely reach out to Emily and send the information to you. But right now, it's, I'm still in that phase of confusion. And Veronica, where are you? I am located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay. Yes. Thank it's you. a beautiful day today. <laughs> Please don't be shy. Beg, you have a question that's falling in your mouth? No, I was just thinking that I appreciated this, that I didn't know what this would look like or what to expect. And of all the like, global ed forms, this is definitely a different direction. Um, but I think that it added something great. And I think that I don't know about everyone else, but I'm glad I was here for it. I second Bex. It was really rewarding when it all came together at the end or towards the end. Mm. The middle was hard. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, I saw you smiling. Maybe you had something to say. Um, I just really enjoyed this. It felt like a break from, I think a lot of us are doing a lot of meetings over Zoom and a lot of school and a lot of lecturing over Zoom. And so I think when you get on, you get on Zoom, you kind of know what to expect and kind of like, kind of dreading it. But this was really nice to talk to new people and just to do something a little bit outside my comfort zone. Personally, I'm not a super creative storyteller person, but it was just really nice to have a break from kind of class and meeting grind on Zoom. Beautiful. Michelle, you wanted to add something? Yeah, I was just thinking um, something similar to Suzanne. Um, to be honest, I'm not that kind of person that uh, always participates in everything. So for me, like just um, stepping out of my zone was um, something that uh, very challenging, but at the same time, something that I'm glad that I did. Lynn. Um, go back to previous questions like when will we carry this uh, storytelling uh, activities and what I want to say is just like I just think a little bit about it can be considered as part of the energizers or icebreaker when we're doing some design training program conduct some training program and we can actually just consider this as some very uh, good start like uh, starting the class or training by requiring the student or learner to just randomly telling their story so I, I think that can be good and very effective to get into a very engaging environment. Beautiful. Tia? Did you say Tia? Yeah. <laughs> um, so additional to with er what everyone else said, um, I, I love stories. Um, I, I was, I never felt like I was a creator of a story, but growing up, my dad used to tell me Anansi stories before going to sleep. And I do find stories very important. Um, but with where I live and kind of being caught up with so many things, I actually forget, um, how important they are and how important they were to me growing up. Um, so this kind of gave me that feeling back when I was a child and my dad used to sit and tell me Anansi stories 
Um, so thank you. Thank you. Henry. Oh, Elizabeth. I want to oh, jump in. Tia, yeah. you just reminded me, I was thinking about storytelling. If I told stories into um, my daughters, if I tell them a story before bed that I made up that actually is based on stories that my dad told me that he had made up about his adventures he'd had with his childhood dog. It's funny, my little five-year-old retells those stories, but she doesn't tell stories from a book, right? If I read her a book, the same book over and over again, she never retells those stories. Mm. She retells the stories of when her uncle Stevie fell through the trap door and was imprisoned by munchkins making M&Ms. Like that's what she retells. And that's one of the stories we tell over and over again and how he escaped. So Tia, you just sort of inspired me that I need to keep that going. Thank you. And thank you, Veronica, for inspiring me about storytelling as well. Beautiful. Thank you. Tracy, I see you. Your body wants to say something. So go ahead. <laughs> um, I've, I'm struck by these, like, I don't know if they're contradictions because that makes them seem like they don't go together. Intersections of both the sort of strict rigidity of you, you know, demanded cameras on, which is without, a, a, without apology, you weren't, you didn't, you didn't fill that out or explain your rule. It's just, that's your rule or else you'll have to leave. And I don't, you know, that, that is not something I'm accustomed to. So I, I was struck by that. And yet this, as I said, I really did feel this sense of low risk. I, I, I heard and understood that whatever happened in this breakout would be okay. So that th those, how those go together and kind of you did have these three steps and that were laid out, but also mm -hmm. this open-endedness of you can't be wrong. So it was, I just, I'm thinking about the interplay of, of the, the, the pillars or the foundational pieces that you implement to leave space around those. Mm -hmm. So that what can be open and calm that you didn't, anticipate that you're not driving mm -hmm. is able to arrive, but it arrives in, 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 in through a vehicle of some very specific things that you prioritize and, and hold dear. So I'm just struck by it, the, how those go together. Beautiful. Well said, well said, well said. All right, I'm gonna call on Henry, Carmen, Aiden, and then Emily for the word of wisdom to close us off, so go. Um, yeah, so, so when I um, was in like elementary and middle school, um, I assume most of you are educators. Is that true in this, in this meeting? Um, so I, I went to a, a system called Waldorf. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, Rudolf Steiner. And it's, it's very, very artistic in the way that it, it teaches and all of that. Um, and so that was how I grew up. And then I went to a public high school and then to American University. And in the past eight years, or in the past like six years, it's been uh, doing public or you know, that type of education. Um, I've kind of got straight away from um, the creative way to through which to learn things. Um, and so this was a very nice um, bringing it back to my roots and stuff like that, which I thought was uh, a really nice thing, especially with all this Zoom and technology, because at my at Waldorf, we, we didn't use computers almost ever. So it was like, oh, bringing it back to to the original roots. So that was very nice. Uh, so yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Aiden, have you, I think you've spoken already, right? I'm not sure. Can't keep track. Um, I have spoken, but I can say one last thing. Um, I just want to thank you for this because this was really cool. Um, not what I, what I was expecting at all, um, but I think this is like a really uh, cool program and like, a, you know, I think it's going to really help me like ground myself you know, when I think back on this. So thank you. Thank you. You can, you two can fight for the last spot, so. <laughs> I'll let David go last because I'm sure he has some great words in his mind. I just wanted to say thank you again and I thought about kind of in the moment of where we together if, if, if I had a moment you know a half an hour of my week to just jam with Henry and Virginia that my week would look so much differently and that I think it would help me break Zoom fatigue but also be so inspired so I just wanted more from their stories I got a little glimpse into their worlds and I just wanted to know more so um, you know, this was a great way to think about that. And, you know, I'll reach out to Henry and Virginia, but it was a really beautiful glimpse into their stories and their co-creation. Um, but I also thought about kind of what you modeled for us of kind of in a way of, of um, ITEP has been thinking a lot about decolonizing education. I think you have decolonized Zoom for me today by showing us how to break things up and how to sort of 
um, intentionally address all of the things that came up when it was difficult or it was anxious or we didn't exactly know what we were doing, but then we also were able to have a critical dialogue in a very short time and in a meaningful way. Um, but you also modeled really kind of more indigenous pedagogical approaches to also storytelling and creation as well as our arts, how we can integrate art. So I think you did a lot of great modeling for us that I think is really important as um, as we go through forward with our work. So thank you for, you know, for leading us through that and helping us um, sort of imagine a different possibility of how we think and learn and do and work together and connect together. And this was probably the fastest uh, one hour on Zoom I've ever experienced for, for all of the ways that you set it up. So thank you. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. Um, you know, with, with today's session, session, I think we saw some of the possibilities of engaging with each other as a community in these virtual spaces. So I'm really happy to be here with you all. Um, I'm happy we had this opportunity to be together as students, scholars, practitioners, um, and try something different. Um, I hope we walk away today bringing this creativity, bringing the energy from this space um, as inspiration to get through the semester and um, moving forward intentionally with our work and our lives in international education, but also on a, in a broad sense. Um, so with that, please join me in thanking Veronica. Thank you for joining thank us today. You. This was wonderful, I really appreciate it. On behalf of ITEP and the team of graduate assistants, I just wanted to thank you all for joining us for this year's International Education Week and this semester's Global Education Forum lineup. Um, please be on the lookout for our spring 2020, 2021 lineup that's going to be coming out very soon. We've got some exciting events in store, but until then, take care, be safe, and have a festive holiday season. Thank and you. I want to say thank you, Emily, for actually reaching out and having and starting this conversation from back on our days in, you know, in graduate school. So this is just this is a joy for me. I can do it every day, all day. So thank you. Thank you for thinking of me and including me in your community, your new community uh, in DC. So thank you so, so, so much. Thank you. Thanks, Veronica. And thanks, uh, David. And thanks, Sally, also acknowledging Sally for being here and helping us with the closed yes. and yeah. making this us reimagine also inclusion in, in a Zoom space. So thank, thank you. you. Thanks, thanks, David, for all your spider reflexes behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, have a great week, everybody. A great weekend and thank you. You too, thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Bye. Thank you.